Hello everyone, Paul Paloni from the city of Beverly Hills back with you. Welcome back to our Beverly Hills virtual art show. We've got a great session up next. Here joining us is renowned woodworker and metal sculptor, David Tannock. His focus has been on large scale objects. Joining him today is Meryl Leibowitz. And with that, I'm gonna pass it over to David and Meryl. So uh, where are you from and where do you currently work? Well, I'm originally from Vermont. I spent my whole life in Northern Vermont until about 10 years ago, we decided to come to California. And uh, we've been living in Venice for the last eight, nine years now. And my studio is in Culver City, which is a nice like four and a half mile ride. Those are your tools in the background? Yeah, this is my studio. Um, I'm in a 10,000 square foot building. Um, I have 800 square feet. Why is it that you work in metal? Well, for 40 years, I was in the building supply industry. I had a building supply business, and then uh, I went into millwork, uh, making flooring and doors. And, and uh, my hobbies were always working in wood, making cabinets and furniture. And, and uh, about 20 years ago, my wife and I got together, and uh, she's an artist. And uh, I just needed to branch out and get away from wood because wood was just, it was starting to drive me crazy. So uh, I went to Penland for uh, a two and a half week class in blacksmithing, fell in love with working with the metal. It's uh, very similar to working with wood in a way. It has, a, it has its process. And once you figure out the process, you just have to work through it to, get to the end. Were you always interested in art? You said you were a woodworker before. In the 40 years I was in business, everything I, I see, I built a lot of stuff. Everything I made was functional. And after meeting my wife, who's a painter, um, started, I started looking at non-functional stuff. And uh, I just want to make non-functional. And right now, size matters, so that's kind of my, my thing. In 2008 was the big crash in the economy, which really hurt my businesses I had back east, and uh, never really recovered from those, which was kind of a blessing because it, got, because it got me out of that corporate world and got me into working with my hands and other passions that drive me. Do you find it helpful that you had all that time in woodworking? Yeah, the woodworking I did was was really precise. I mean, you had to be, when you're doing a chest of drawers, they got to have right tolerances in order for them to work properly and look like they work properly. And those tolerances were a 64th of an inch, whereas with metal, I'm working within a quarter inch tolerance. And the best part about metal is uh, if you cut it too short, you can always re-weld it and make it back to the full length. Board, it's pretty hard to do. Do you um, feel that your work has like an overall subject? I've always been intrigued by tools. And in the last six or eight years, I've been working on a series of tools of the trade. I've done a couple of hammers. I've done a claw hammer. I've done a ball peen hammer, a screwdriver, a pair of uh, slip pliers, a monkey wrench. Uh, finished a big egg, egg beater last year. I did a whisk. Um, and once in a while, I do a commission. I did a commission a couple of years ago, which I I got at. Uh, the Beverly Hills uh, show, uh, a gentleman from uh, Gardena um, saw me at the show and I actually made a large, uh, uh, an eight foot tall glass cutter for cutting glass, the old fashioned style. Uh, he has a glass business down in uh, Gardena. Uh, but mainly, you know, I, um, I have a gallery that uh, first took me on board about eight years ago up in Napa. There's a gallery in Aspen and in Vail. It's called the Vickers Collection. Right here on the bench, 
is a piece for um, a large 80 inch diameter ball. Let me see if I can get you there. The, six, the ball is uh, 16 different pieces. This is one of the pieces. I've got the card over here that has the rest of the pieces on it. We'll head outside. Just finished these the other day. Uh, these are going to Napa uh, in 10 days after I finished the big ball. It's a jack. Support that. And then I finished this about uh, three weeks ago. It's a big padlock. It's going lockdown. At one point, I, it, it did work. I had to weld it because it was awful dangerous and it wouldn't stay up. So, and then here's my And so those pieces are hollow, correct? Yes, it's all hollow. It's all everything I do is mainly one eighth inch thick steel that I I cut with a uh, plasma handheld plasma, or I have a, uh, a guy down in Gardena that, that when I have to do a lot of parts, he'll cut them on his automotive, on his automatic machine. And then I bend them, most of it's all hand bent with a hammer. And sometimes I have to use a torch because it's, it's thicker or I, or I need a tighter bend. Yep. And, and they will rust, is that correct? Right, you can see it's starting to rust. Um, if anyone has questions. Yes. Uh, hey, David, we do have some questions from the audience. Uh, we have a few people curious about how long it took you to actually make those jacks and that lock and key. It's taken me my whole life. The only way I can really answer that is it's taken me my whole life because every time I build a piece, I refine the process a little bit. So I feel like I'm always learning. Um, my wife one time said to me, taken me 40 years to figure out how to mix these colors to get the paint on the on the painting so it's hard to it's hard to put it into time but another question somebody is curious about what is your next big project that you have coming up do you have you have that figured out yet what do what do you uh, see yourself building in the near future here um yeah but it's a secret <laughs> you know it's it's I, I like to be as free as I can when I'm creating something. I, the only influence I want to be able to have is I want to be able to have it from my own experiences. And I really, that's why it's, it's hard for me to do a commission even. It's like I want to be able to just be free and build what I want, how I want, and then uh, we go from there. Awesome. Let's say we got another question here. Uh, somebody is curious about if they wanted to start getting involved into metal work. What would you have any advice for them out of the gate? Um, find a good uh, tech school where you can go and take uh, uh, some classes. Uh, you know, learn the fundamentals and then the rest will come. Usually. Right on. And uh, well, David and Meryl, we want to thank you both so much for taking the time um, to join us for this. Well, thank you for having me and uh, peace. <laughs> thank you. Thank you.